It's one of the few places people in Port-au-Prince can receive medical care. But even this hospital, run by Doctors Without Borders, has been forced to cut its daily outpatients from 150 to 50. Staff and patients alike have trouble accessing the site due to violence in surrounding areas. This man said police in an armoured vehicle shot him the previous day, adding all he had in his hands at the time was a piece of wood he was hoping to sell as Kindle. I heard gunshots coming from the armoured car, so I hit the ground with my hand covering my head. And when I saw all the blood, I thought I was going to die. Armed gangs forced the closure of the main international airport in early March and have paralysed operations at the country's largest seaport, where containers filled with key supplies remain stuck. They've also looted and set fire to pharmacies. Doctors here say they've run out of many medications used to treat diabetes, asthma and high blood pressure. For more specialised types of healthcare, it's becoming more and more difficult to find hospitals that are open, uh, that have the drugs and the material necessary uh, to, to, to provide that kind of healthcare. The gangs, who now control most of the capital, had said their siege was a battle to oust former Prime Minister Ariel Henry. Though since he said he would resign on March 11, there's been little let up in attacks. Last week, Haiti named nine members of a transitional council in a bid to end the power vacuum and violence that's long plagued the Caribbean nation. The body is expected to choose a prime minister and wield certain presidential powers by majority vote.